Homework assignment, try it, 19-5. We're gonna adjust for either over allocated or under allocated overhead. All right, the following information pertains to Smith Company for the year. So we've got estimated manufacturing overhead, 500,000, we've got estimated direct labor hours of 10,000, we've got actual overhead of 550,000, we've got actual direct labor hours of 10,500. So we are on 13. Calculate the predetermined overhead allocation rate using direct labor hours as the allocation base. So as a reminder from our slides and previous videos, when we're gonna account for manufacturing overhead, the first step is before the period begins, the company is gonna calculate the predetermined overhead allocation rate. And the formula for that is you're gonna take, the company's gonna to have to estimate their overhead costs for the period and then divide it by whatever allocation base they choose. And the allocation base is pretty much whatever drives their overhead causes their overhead to either go up or down and this company in the example shows direct labor costs and so did this company they chose to use direct labor excuse me direct labor hours all right so our formula for this predetermined overhead allocation rate is we take the estimated overhead cost divided by that allocation base and instead of direct labor costs, this company here in the problem has chosen to use direct labor hours. And these are estimated. So it's done at the beginning of the period. Estimated overhead cost. So estimated overhead cost divided by estimated direct labor hours. And so we get that information uh, from our table. So ignore the actual numbers for now, which are over here. We're going to use the estimated manufacturing overhead of a 500,000. Copy and paste. And then we've got estimated direct labor hours of 10,000 hours. Okay, when we do the math, 500,000 divided by 10,000 hours gives us $50 per direct labor hour. So what this means is $50 per hour is if a job had one hour of direct labor, in other words, the job took one hour of direct labor, then that job would have $50 of overhead allocated to it. If the job had two hours of direct labor, then we would allocate twice that, $100 of overhead. So now it says determine the amount of overhead allocated during the year. So this is where we're using the actual hours. So actual direct hours are 10,500. So going back to the slides, what we're doing here is we're allocating overhead to jobs. In this example, we did jobs individually, but what we're doing in the homework assignment is we're just taking the total of the hours and then we're gonna multiply it by our predetermined overhead allocation rate. So we're gonna take our actual direct labor hours. Remember this company chose to use direct labor hours. So at the end of the period, we're gonna take our actual direct labor hours, 10,500, and we're gonna multiply it by this predetermined overhead allocation rate, which was 50 bucks an hour. So we had 10,500 hours of direct labor you can also tell right here oops actual direct labor hours and we're going to multiply that by 50 hours 50 dollars per hour which we got from up here and that gives us five hundred and twenty five thousand dollars of overhead that we will allocate to jobs throughout the year So when I say we allocated those jobs, getting back to our example, we allocate, here's manufacturing overhead, we allocate jobs on the right side. 
So we're lowering overhead and allocating them to jobs. We're basically spreading out overhead to jobs based on the job size. Now it says record the journal entry. So this is a little bit confusing. Well, what are they talking about? So remember, we are in 14. So 14 says determine the amount of overhead allocated during the year. So let me go back to a different slide from our PowerPoint and from a previous video. Remember job 70 where we took $50 of overhead and allocated it to the job? And here's job 70, here's job 70's all their costs, $50 of which was manufacturing overhead. So we're going to do the journal entry. So notice when we're allocating, remember allocating happens on the credit side. We're lowering manufacturing overhead, and then what is this account here that we are debiting? It's work in process. So work in process is going to go up, and how much did we allocate? Five hundred twenty-five thousand. And what is the account we're crediting? Well, remember, when we are allocating manufacturing overhead, we are lowering the manufacturing overhead account. All right, so step 15. Determine the amount of under allocated or over allocated overhead. Record the journal entry to adjust manufacturing overhead. So what this is is a T account for manufacturing overhead. Remember, in this more detailed example, we had our actual costs, our actual overhead costs, and they were accumulated on the left side, the debit side. Here's a better example of what those costs are that we're allocating, things like indirect materials like the glue, indirect labor, plant depreciation, etc. So the actual overhead costs are accumulating on the left side. So we need to look up here to find our actual manufacturing overhead, 550,000, and those accumulate on this side. And then the thing that happens on the right side, that is when we are allocating, right here it tells you allocating overhead to the individual jobs. That occurs on the credit side. So the amount that we allocated is right here. Notice this is manufacturing overhead and it's being credited. So we're putting it here. So now what they're asking is this manufacturing overhead, remember these are the actual costs and this is the amount that we have allocated. So first of all, what is the balance in this account? Do we have a balance on the left side or the right side? Well, we have a balance of 25,000 on the left side. So that we, means we have not allocated enough. So if we had allocated just the right amount, this would be a zero balance. But we still have some overhead over here that has not been allocated. So it was under allocated. If it had a balance on the credit side, that would be over allocated. Now record the journal entry to adjust manufacturing overhead. So let me bring in a T account in Excel, kind of show you a little bit better what's going on because I have labels. So our actual overhead is over here on the left side, 550,000. We've only allocated 25,000 of it. So let me get rid of this to show you what it would look like. So we have a balance of 25,000 here. So remember, this is a temporary account. So we need to zero it out at the end of the year. So how do we zero out this account? We have to put 25,000 on the credit side. So manufacturing overhead will be credited 25,000. So this account, if we credit it 25,000, would then have a zero balance, which is what we want. 
And then, of course, the other account that we always use when we are adjusting overhead is COX, cost of goods sold. Oops, I forgot the debit. Yeah, that's a lot better. So if you skip the videos, this homework problem was probably going to be pretty confusing. So you really need to watch these videos. This is a very detailed chapter.